Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the Notifications API. This is a wonderful browser tool that will allow you to send desktop notifications whenever you feel like it, to an extent. There's a couple caveats and it can be kind of tricky to test in a localhost environment. The reason being it does require a uh, SSL connection, or sorry, a HTTPS connection, and that can be kind of a pain to set up in a Chromium browser. So for this case, I'm gonna be using Firefox because it's just the God's gift to testing this kind of stuff. And for setting up the HTTPS connection, we're gonna be using this uh, tutorial I used the other, or maybe created like a, in May, I guess, where you can quickly set this up with like two or three commands and it just makes testing a breeze. So we're gonna be using that and then we're gonna be using Action Cable to broadcast after we create a post that will then broadcast to a JavaScript snippet. That snippet then does the notification broadcast. The request permissions on the homepage, you can see here whenever I click this button, it triggers another one of these. Uh, so if we don't already have permissions and we're on this, we have to request them. The reason is if you don't request the permissions and you just uh, like prompt the user for the permission on the Action Cable broadcast, you can actually get sort of yelled at by like Firefox and other things. Uh, in the console, I can't show you here, uh, because it's supposed to be something where the user does an action and that action triggers the uh, request for notifications. Because we're using Action Cable here, the way that I envision this setup is you have multiple users on the site. And in the case where you have multiple users, if you know this user over here creates a notification, like by saying test and case or whatever, this user over here hasn't uh, you know, opted into those notifications. It would then pop up this notification and that would be just a bad user experience, right? So enough about that. Let's go ahead and let's create this real quick. It's actually not that difficult. We'll do a Rails new video. The notifications API and this tutorial will be in the video description if you're interested in either one. Uh, the tutorials commands will also be in the readme for this project, hopefully, if I remember to do that. So let's go ahead and let's CD into our video real quick. And in our video, we'll do a code dot. This is a blank Rails project, just to remind you, that's how I always run things. Uh, and yeah, let's go ahead and let's open this up. Uh, oops, I have to move this over, just like that. All right, so first things first, we're gonna come into our readme, and in our readme, I'm gonna paste in the two commands we need to use here. The first one is going to use OpenSSL to generate a SSL certificate for us. If you don't have OpenSSL already, just do a sudo apt install, I think it's OpenSSL is what it's called, just like that. In my case, I already have it installed, so I'm just going to paste this first command in. This will generate two key files for us. We can then come into our config, right-click, new folder, call it SSL. We can then drag both of these files, oops, into that SSL folder. I don't know if this is the best way to do this. This is just how I personally do it. Now we can come into our uh, readme. There's a Rails S command here you could use to run the server, but I don't like having to type all this extra stuff every time. So instead, I just come into my Puma file when I'm testing. Uh, and inside of this Puma file, I just put in this one block that says SSL bind to 0.0.0.0. Localhost 3001 is the port I want to use. And I set the key and the cert to be the config slash SSL localhost key and cert. Go ahead and save that and close it. So now that we have that done, I should be able to run a Rails S and this should start the server on localhost port 3000, which is our HTTP connection. And down here is our SSL, which is gonna be our HTTPS. So now I can come over to HTTPS uh, colon slash slash localhost port 3001, and I'll get the security risk prompt. You get this in Chromium browsers too, but for some reason they still don't work for some of these features like voice messages that we've tested on the channel before, as well as this one. Uh, so for this, you do have to use Firefox. So now we have a H HTTPS right here and we should be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the server, hit F11, and now we're gonna generate some stuff. We're gonna do a scaffold for some posts with a title and a body of type text. We're then going to do a Rails G stimulus for a notification stim, oops, I typoed that. Uh, let's do a Rails D for that to destroy it. And let's come back up here and let's do Rails notification uh, for our uh, button to request those permissions. Finally, let's do a Rails G channel for the notifications channel. Go ahead and run that. And now let's do a Rails S to start our server. Okay, so let's come into our, uh, actually let's come into our config and our routes.rb because I want to set the root to be the post controller index action. Come over here and refresh. That should take us here. We'll run the pending migrations and now we're good to go. So let's come into our views, our posts, and our post index page. In our post index page, we want to set up the 
uh, the button to request those permissions. We'll do that right below our posts. It's gonna be a button with a data dash controller of notification, because that's the name of our stimulus controller, a data dash action. So on click, it's gonna be notifications controller and the request permission action. You can go ahead and save that over here to our controllers. Oops, sorry, our JavaScript, our controllers and our notification controller. Inside of this notification controller, we have to do that request permission method, which is just a request permission. Console logs out that you're clicking on it, then it calls notification, which is that notification API, dot request permission, dot then, and then in here it says if the permission is equal to granted, after, so this is in the dot then, so this function right here triggers after the request notification happens. So if the user allows it, you then see uh, a new notification that says hi there. So that's where that hi there comes from. So let's come over here and refresh, click this button, and you can see that pops this up and we can either allow it or block it. I'm gonna go ahead and allow it and there's our pop-up right there. So and th in theory, now you're pretty much done, but we wanna use action cable for this to make it a bit more snappy. To do that, we have to come into our channels and our notifications channel. Inside of our notifications channel, we really only have to tell it to stream from the notifications channel. At this point, we're pretty much done here because we're gonna be doing this in not the cleanest way, but it's a way that kind of works. In our post model, this is where we're gonna do the same thing we do with Turbo on the channel, which a lot of times you'll recall, we just do something like after create commit or after create, we do a broadcast to whatever channel or whatever stream. Here we're doing the same thing. After create, we notify users. And that's just a method we create in here that says notify users with a action cable server broadcast. It broadcasts to the notifications channel, which is the same one that we have inside of our actual notifications channel that we're streaming from. We pass on the title and the body. Now we can come over here and we can do new post, do a test and a case, click create post and you'll see that didn't quite fire. Why is that? Well, this is going to our notifications channel. This is then uh, going to the front end, which is in our JavaScript channels and our notifications channel. So this is where it's actually need needing to happen. So in here, let's first check if we're connected. We can do a console log to say this is connected to this channel. If we now refresh, we'll see that in our web console. So that's good. That means that this is at least you know, on the page. In here, there's a received method. So when we receive something, we're gonna call another method that just says display notification. That display notification is shamelessly copied from the notifications API page. In here, we just do a couple checks. First, if the notification in window, this is a check to make sure the browser supports notifications. So if this is true, then you're good here. If it's false, it'll give a console.warn that says this browser does not support desktop notifications. Else if we can do a check for notification.permission equals granted. So if the user previously granted permissions, we're good to go. We create a new notification where we pass in the data.title and the body, uh, which is the data.body. And again, this uh, dot title and dot body on this data is because in our post, we set a title and a body. This whole thing is then passed into the notification. And if you'll recall, the receive takes in data. So this entire block right here is this data. So that's why we can call dot title and dot body on it. Okay, and then the final block here is a check if the permission does not equal denied, which is just saying you need to request permissions. This is where you could in theory also do this notification request block. The issue is if you do this in here and I have a second window, that second window might you know, fire this, uh, this thing where it, it requires other users to uh, request notifications. So let's say uh, for argument's sake, this window right here, my main one, has not accepted notifications yet. It just got to this website. And then let's say this one over here just created a new post. Well, this user still needs to accept notifications. So when this one creates a new post, this uh, display notifications would then in theory trigger this one to request a new notification. But this user hasn't clicked on anything yet, which means it's technically just running in the background right away, which is bad practice. So you probably don't wanna do that. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna stick with this console.log, you know, you need to re request permissions or something. You could of course change it. I'm not an expert on this. I could just be full of it, but I think that's why I was getting that error earlier. 
So now let's come back over to here and let's do a new post, new post. So I'll say, hello everyone. And then I'll say, Dean here, how are you? And then I'll click create post. And now you can see, hello everyone, Dean here, how are you? And this will also work, of course, if you have a user in another browser where you can't test this stuff. So over here in Brave, I can come to the same localhost uh, port 3001, click advanced, proceed to uh, localhost unsafe. And again, this browser still needs to request permissions. It also won't work because this is a Chromium browser. I can come in here and say testing one, two, three, and four, five, six for the body, click create. Because this window's open, it'll also get that notification. But again, this isn't the same thing as a service worker, which would run in the background. And that one would also work if this window were completely closed with the notifications channel closed. Uh, that's something we can cover in the future. But for this one, I just wanted to cover these uh, quick little notifications. So you can see here, now it's not working because that Firefox window is gone and Chromium browsers are mega cringe. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully this was informative and helpful and hopefully I will see you in the next one.